Last week in New York City, I got to check out the new Samsung Odyssey Arc monitor, and let me tell you, this thing is pretty breathtaking in person. I do want to preface by saying that technically Samsung did announce this behemoth back at CES uh, in January of this year, but it's finally available to pre-order today. And getting a chance to check it out in New York City was quite an experience. This has to be one of the coolest, most intriguing monitors I've ever seen in my life. But I will preface by saying that this massive 55 inch curved mini LED display is not going to be for everyone and it's definitely not going to be cheap. In fact, it retails for $34.99, which I am well aware is uh, a Again, not cheap, uh, but the Odyssey Arc is the world's first 55 inch 4K curved gaming monitor with 165 hertz refresh rate and a one millisecond response time. It's also a mini LED display, as I mentioned earlier, which is not something that you'll see in a lot of monitors right now on the market, especially gaming monitors. Obviously, some of the biggest features here is not only you can use this monitor like a traditional display, uh, especially when you have it in landscape mode here, but it actually fully rotates for a totally different level of immersion. Samsung calls this the cockpit mode, and rotating this monitor vertically really is quite a sight to see. Uh, you now have the ability to use three different spaces on the monitor with different streams of video running on each of them. Now, you can have your laptop on the bottom display. I feel like that makes the most sense. When it's, when it's rotated vertically like this and you have one display kind of sectioned off here at the bottom of the monitor, that one's actually pretty eye level and the most comfortable to use. And the rest you're gonna have to kind of look up for, but it never was kind of like a strain on my neck or any big deal. It actually kind of works out, especially the way it curves. So you can have your laptop or gaming console on the one third, you can have a web browser on the other, and you can have the YouTube app playing your favorite tech videos on the other. So with that said, if you're wondering how I justify this monitor, I basically look at it as three separate displays. So if I bought three monitors at say $1,000 or $1,299, then you basically have the price point of this. And there's more functionality, especially when you have it rotated vertically. Now the biggest bummer right now is that you can only use one input on one of these three spaces for the monitor. So if I hook up my Xbox via HDMI, I can't use the other HDMI input for another stream of video like my laptop. Instead, I'd be limited to the built-in applications that Samsung offers for this monitor, which there is a lot of options, but if you wanted a console and your work computer hooked up or two computers hooked, you just can't do that right now. I mean, you can have them hooked up and you can switch between them, but you can't have them displaying at the same time. Not sure if this is something that can be changed in the future via a software update. I'm guessing it's probably a hardware limitation at this current moment in time. And maybe this is something that Samsung can improve on in the next generation of this monitor. But right now, that's kind of my biggest complaint. Uh, again, I won't know fully if it's a huge deal until I kind of get one in for review, which will be happening soon. But right now, this is my biggest problem with the monitor. Now, as far as the display goes, this is a matte display, which does provide benefits against glare and reflection. And as I mentioned earlier, it is a 165 hertz monitor with a 4K resolution and uses Samsung's proprietary quantum matrix mini LED technology that according to Samsung provides precise lighting expressions and details HDR control. At least all of this, again, according to Samsung. In my opinion, I do think this monitor looks really good. And I will be getting my own unit to test out over the next few weeks, but from my limited time, I was very happy with the quality of this monitor. I thought it looked great during normal work tasks. We did have a Windows PC hooked up, but again, I was testing it out and I thought it worked well and it really performed well during our gaming tests too. Now we talked about cockpit mode when the screen is vertical and it can display three different streams of video, but when you're in normal orientation, it's actually up to four screens at once. You can use this accessory called the arc dial that kind of just sits off like a mouse would off to your right or left hand side and you use the dial and everything to kind of scroll through the UI and adjust different controls and functions like screen size, ratio, gaming settings, and much more. The flex move screen allows you to adjust between 55 and 27 inches, and you can adjust the position of the screen and aspect ratio all using this arc dial. It's actually a pretty handy tool to have, especially for navigating through some of the things in the UI that you probably wouldn't wanna do using a remote or something. Uh, so again, it can be a little cumbersome at times, but it is a much better option uh, for what it could have been. 
I do want to briefly touch on the design of this monitor as it's very reminiscent of Samsung's kind of higher end TVs. The stand and the overall aesthetics reminds me of a Samsung television. And I mean, it is a 55 inch monitor, so it might as well just kind of be a television at this point. The back of the monitor does have what Samsung calls eclipse lighting, and it can be set up to cycle through various RGB color modes. It can be customized for both landscape and cockpit mode. And if you're wondering uh, where the lack of ports are on the back here, well, that's because there aren't any. Samsung actually uses uh, Samsung's One Connect box that includes four HDMI 2.1 ports. And the Arc also has gaming hub capabilities, which means you can stream uh, your favorite games from different platforms like Xbox, Nvidia GeForce Now, Google Stadia, and more. So overall, this monitor was pretty incredible to see in person. Uh, it, la it definitely left a lasting impression, but I really do need to put it through its paces when we get our unit here, and so I can't wait to spend more time with it. But I do wanna know your thoughts in the comments down below. Do you think at first glance, is this something that could replace three to four different monitors if you're somebody that uses that many? Um, or is this kind of a gimmicky thing to you? You know, I just wanna know in the comments down below. And of course, when we do get our unit, I will be setting it up with different Mac setups and gaming consoles. But if there's something specific that you'd like to see, let me know down in those comments. This has been Dan with Mac Rumors. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you around in the next video.